general, the human. No? All right, and by recording now. Um, so in general, the human breast is composed of two kinds of main cells, the lobular cells whose main purpose is to store milk and the milk duct cells that are the small tunnels through which milk travels as it comes out the nipple. This leads to the two most common types of breast cancers we see, invasive ductal carcinoma arising from the duct cells and invasive lobular carcinoma arising from the lobules. Metastatic breast cancer, also called stage four or advanced breast cancer, is not a specific type of breast cancer, but it's the most advanced stage of breast cancer. MBC or metastatic breast cancer, I'll use either both of those interchangeably, is breast cancer that has spread beyond the breast and nearby lymph nodes to other parts of the body, most often the bones, the lungs, the liver, or the brain. Although MBC has spread to another part of the body, it's still breast cancer and treated as breast cancer. For example, if it's spread to the bone, it's still breast cancer and not bone cancer. Um, metastatic breast cancer can occur months or years after completing treatment for early or locally advanced breast cancer. This is seen in 30% of all women diagnosed with breast cancer. Or it can be present at the initial diagnosis of breast cancer. When it's present at initial diagnosis, this is also known as de novo metastatic breast cancer, or in other words, from the beginning of its discovery, it's already spread to other organs. This specific situation occurs in 6% of women with breast cancer in the United States. So what do we already know about metastatic breast cancer? We know that it cannot be cured. Here I have a few words by Josh Woodard that addresses the hopelessness that can come with the diagnosis of not just cancer, but cancer that has progressed and spread to other organs. There's something that lives inside me. I promise I never let it in. It grows and divides inside me. It's making a home beneath my skin. The seeds have been buried deeply. The roots are in place. It's crowding the sun and it's darkened my days. I've taken it all for granted, but now it's too late. There's nothing that's left to do but wait. Now, as stark as that sounds, I'm really here to tell you that the fact is that there is hope. Women with MBC are living much longer now than ever before. In 1970, of every 100 women diagnosed with MBC, only 10 would still be alive in five years. In just 25 years, by 1995, those numbers changed dramatically from 10 of 100 women surviving to 40 out of every 100 women surviving at the five-year mark. As we continue to publish more data on women with MBC, we see that the survival is even better, especially when we pursue specific treatments. So what are the goals of treatment? They're to provide symptom relief, to avoid complications of the disease progressing, and to prolong the survival while maintaining quality of life. So let's take a step back and review, how do we treat breast cancer? In general, when talking about breast cancer treatments, we discuss local therapies, such as surgery, which aims to remove most of the disease. Radiation, which aims to eliminate the microscopic disease in and around the breast. And systemic therapy, which includes hormone therapy, chemotherapy and targeted therapies, which help your whole body fight and shrink the cancer. But how do we treat metastatic breast cancer? So if we're looking at um, historically, then historically only systemic treatments were offered to metastatic breast cancer. Surgery was reserved for those women with MBC whose breast cancer was causing problems like bleeding, infection, cancer so large that it was ulcerated or growing through the skin or causing significant pain. Surgery was basically only reserved for palliative measures because of the thought that local control or surgery in this case, probably had no effect on the overall survival in MBC. So does surgical resection help any other metastatic cancer? Well, when we look at some other cancers, such as metastatic renal cell carcinoma, several randomized controlled trials showed that local surgery 
meaning surgery on the cancer itself in the kidney, plus systemic therapy led to longer survival rates than systemic therapy alone. Another recent study showed that local surgery was beneficial for people with metastatic colorectal cancer. Metastatic melanoma and stomach cancer are two additional cancers that fall into this category. This has led to the hypothesis that local treatment in metastatic breast cancer can also improve survival. Studies in mice show that after resection of the primary breast tumor, there is a reduction in the growth of metastatic tumors, suggesting that the removal of the primary tumor is not just a local phenomenon. What are some mechanisms by which this could be happening? One thought is that removing the local breast cancer activates the immune system to fight against the spread of cancer. And the thought is that we reduce the overall impact of the tumor burden. We remove the origin or seed source for possible new metastases. So what does the data say? A review paper by Dr. Joanna Lee of UPMC looks at eight different retrospective studies that demonstrate varying degrees of survival benefit for metastatic breast cancer. We'll just zoom in to one of those. Jera et al. published in 2020, the largest meta-analysis regarding the question of local regional um, therapy in de novo stage four metastatic breast cancer. So all this means is that local, there was a 31.8% reduction in mortality in MBC patients who received surgery and radiation in addition to systemic therapy. This is a pretty significant number and it's a pretty large scale meta-analysis study. The study concluded that local regional treatment, in other words, surgery and radiation, should be considered in selected patients with multiple multidisciplinary discussions. A lot is unknown about the molecular mechanisms by how this happens, but there are most likely a subset of patients who will benefit from this kind of treatment. So the question is, which patients benefit most? All of the reviewed studies have different selection criteria for which patients undergo local regional therapy in addition to systemic therapy. Several subsets indicate improved survival in patients who have a good performance status, which means how well can you do your activities of daily living? How active and independent are you? Can you walk a couple blocks and go, up a, a, go upstairs without uh, getting short of breath? Those all indicate your performance status. Your tumor biology, patients who have ERPR positive cancers and HER2 negative cancers generally do the best with this kind of treatment, surgery and radiation, in addition to, to systemic therapy. Folks who have fewer areas of metastases, just one area, or one to four sites, which is called oligometastatic disease, do better than but those who have more than four. The location of the metastases, if the met metastatic disease is only at the bone, that is the most favorable outcome. Folks who have long remission times, if, if a long period of time has gone by from the treatment of the initial cancer and occurrence of the metastatic disease, that is a favorable factor. And the ability to surgically remove the entire cancer if the cancer is eroding through the skin or going through the muscle deeply, then that becomes a little bit more difficult to achieve confidence that we have surgically removed all of it and is a poorer prognostic factor. So I'm just gonna take a step back here and talk a little bit about the kinds of studies that we're talking about. Up until now, we have reviewed retrospective studies that examine patient characteristics and outcomes in the past. Prospective studies are designed to examine outcomes in real time going forward and could potentially control the intervention. Randomized controlled trials, which is our highest level of data, are prospective studies. So let's talk about some prospective studies addressing this same question. First, King and colleagues reported in 2015 
that the response to systemic therapy was associated with overall survival and, and local regional therapies did not affect it at all. So this goes against our hypothesis. In this US-based study, however, the follow-up time was 54 months. And it's important to note that it was a very small study with only 128 patients included in the analysis. So that means that potentially the results are probably um, not as generalizable to everybody. The second study is a randomized trial looking at local regional treatment versus no treatment of primary tumors by Bodway and colleagues published in 2019. Here, they reported no difference in survival between the two groups. It's an Indian study, however, which means that it was conducted in India where the systemic therapy used in the study was different from the usual standard used in the US. So the results from this study are not generalizable and applicable to the patients being treated in the United States. The third study is a prospective randomized phase three trial, also called the positive trial, in which 90 patients were included and looked at over 37 and a half months. The patients were randomly assigned to surgical resection followed by systemic therapy or primary systemic therapy only. This study also did not show overall survival benefit with a surgical resection. Instead, it demonstrated a statistically non-significant tr trend towards worse survival. But it should be noted that the study set out to enroll 254 patients and it did not reach its intended sample size, which was required to detect a clinically relevant treatment effect. Therefore, the results cannot be interpreted as conclusive at this time. There are also several studies demonstrating positive results. In 2019, Palma and colleagues conducted a randomized study looking at radiation therapy specifically. They compared the palliative standard of care treatment alone or the standard of care plus radi radiotherapy, ablative radiotherapy in patients with a controlled primary tumor and between one and five metastatic lesions. This demonstrated an improvement in overall survival. Those who received both therapies lived 41 months in general, and those who only received the palliative measures had a 28 month survival. This study concluded that there needs to be, um, of course, more data that to show a direct overall survival benefit, but the trend demonstrates that in folks with metastatic disease, ablative radiotherapy in addition to palliative would be beneficial. Now, just a few months ago, uh, Dr. Attila Saran of, of McGee um, published a study in the Journal of the American College of Surgeons, which compared the resection of the primary tumor with no surgery. It's important to note that there were 265 patients included over a 10-year period of time, and local regional therapy group um, had more breast cancer that was ER positive and less triple negative, which brings up the question whether really it's tumor biology that's impacting the patients who tend to do well. This, the final analysis from this demonstrated that there is a 10-year benefit to those patients who received surgery, as well as a five-year survival at 58% higher survival and 14% higher chance of survival by 10 years. Since more than half of patients with metastatic disease present with bone only metastases, this study, again by Dr. Saran and colleagues published in 2021, sought to examine the population of patients that have only bone metastases. This was also a randomized controlled trial looked at 505 patients over 34 months and concluded that there is improved overall survival with a 60% lower hazard of death when patients with bone 
Non-melanoma metastases are offered surgery in addition to uh, therapies. So this is a lot of information, um, ranging from results that demonstrate negative effects to results that demonstrate positive effects to uh, one or two that demonstrate no effect at all. So what does this mean? We know that systemic therapies are effective at improving the prognosis for patients with MBC. Like I said, historically, only systemic therapies were used for metastatic breast cancer. So we know that that is a very effective method of treatment. And since, it has been, since it's been initiated, chemotherapy, directed therapies, immune therapy, um, and hormone therapy have all improved significantly and provide excellent treatments for MBC. There are mixed results from the retrospective analyses regarding the survival benefit of surgery and radiation therapy in MBC, but newly published randomized controlled trials with long-term follow-ups suggest that there is a benefit of local regional therapy meaning removal of breast cancer locally via surgery and radiation therapy in addition to systemic therapy. So up until now, we've been talking about surgery and radiation as it deals with the primary cancer. Well, what about intervention to the metastatic sites, the lesions in the bone, the lung, the liver? What if we remove those as well? Can we surgically resect and or use radiation therapies to those diseases and metastasize to other organs? This is the question that I addressed in my recent review of 200 patients, half of which undergo interventions to their metastatic disease and the other half with no intervention. The interventions here included surgical resection and radiotherapy mechanisms such as ablation, Microwave, microwave ablation, radiofrequency ablation, um, and other, other mechanisms. So what are the results? In patients with stage one to three breast cancer who then go on to develop metastatic disease to the bone, liver, or the lung, the intervention to the metastatic lesion was found to have improved overall survival and improved survival after the um, metastatic disease was um, diagnosed. So here I have a graph that kind of demonstrates that in the red are those with no intervention or NI, and in the blue are the patients that received an intervention or IM. And you can see here that over time in months in the x-axis, there is an increased survival trend seen with the patients who receive intervention to their metastatic disease. Those who received these interventions had improved overall survival by 34%. And we noticed that those with limited metastatic disease and specifically patients who had at least a two year period of time between their primary cancer and the discovery of metastatic disease benefit the most from this kind of intervention. These are the patients that should be discussed in a multidisciplinary fashion where various disciplines can chime in and talk about the pros and cons of intervention. So let's look at the general conclusions. In general, as we continue to study metastatic breast cancer, the role of surgery and radiation therapy to the primary tumor and to the metastatic lesion are going to become more and more clear and new st standards will be published accordingly. Many patient and tumor factors tend to respond favorably to local intervention. And like I said, as we research this more, we'll find out exactly who those patients can be. But I briefly touched on the general facts that we know. The National Society for Cancers, the current NCCN guidelines, currently recommend an individualized approach, meaning the physicians involved in your cancer care should come together and decide what the best approach is for any and all patients that have metastatic breast cancer. Would surgery and radiation therapy be beneficial for you? 
There are many unanswered questions, but we continue to research and try to find ways to improve survival while maintaining quality of life. So what does all of this information mean for you? If you're currently in remission, great. You need to continue your regular check-ins with your doctor, get mammograms where applicable, any other modalities of imaging where applicable. The most important thing is to catch a recurrence early that improves significantly your chances of having the most optimal treatment regimen and chance of um, eliminating the cancer. What symptoms are you supposed to look out for? Well, headache, seizures, vision changes like blurred or double vision, blood balance problems, new difficulty breathing, a persistent cough, yellowing of the skin, easy bruising or bleeding, new bone pain, and unintended weight loss or fatigue or insomnia. Any of those symptoms that are new for you should prompt an evaluation by your physician. All things to look out for. What if I was just diagnosed with MBC? Well, the most important thing to know is that there is hope. There's a period of time when patients who develop metastatic breast cancer were not offered much of any treatments because of the thought that it would be futile. Well, we keep on pushing the envelope and trying to discover exactly what can help and does help. In addition to systemic therapies, surgery and radiation definitely are showing themselves to have a role. You need to talk to your doctors about what the next steps would be. And you need to ask about having your case potentially reviewed by a multidisciplinary tumor board. Follow all the recommended guidelines, but ask questions. What if I have had metastatic breast cancer for a long time? Well, again, continue your regular check-ins with your doctor, watch out for worsening of any symptoms, and participate in groups like this so you can be informed on the latest research and treatment options. The research is constantly being updated. There's more and more literature and more and more studies that come out every year. And like I said, sometimes they negate each other. But the general trend in the last 15, 20 years is that we're discovering more and more that surgery and radiation can help women with metastatic breast cancer. And we're just trying to refine which women would benefit the most. We want to not just prolong survival, but we want to prolong survival while maintaining quality of life. Because at the end of the day, we all want to be there for the things and the people that matter most. So I tried to keep this brief, but I'm happy to keep, take any questions at this point. This is me and my uh, nine month old twins um, in warmer weather. Please feel free to jot down my email address. If you would like to ask me a question now, feel free. And if you would like to email me, you can also do that. Thank you. Thank you. They're so cute. I'm going to stop recording this.